This is the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with Kelly Hanlon McCormick, and today is episode number 244, Personal Definitions. Welcome to Transforming Anxiety. I'm your host, Kelly McCormick. I'm a mom to two boys, a wife, friend, daughter, and sister, and I'm a certified life coach, yoga teacher, and soon-to-be mindfulness meditation teacher. I'm no stranger to anxiety, and I'm here to teach you how to manage your mind and your emotions so that you too can transform anxiety into calm, peace, and whatever you want for your life. I'm so glad you're here. Well, hey there. Welcome in today. We're just going to get into it. You ready? I'm kind of excited about this one. This is something I've been talking with students about for years. (laughs) And for some reason, it just occurred to me, I don't think we've ever done a podcast about this. So today we're talking about personal definitions. And my intention for our conversation is that we are going to allow ourselves to redefine the roles, the goals, the desires in our lives according to us, that we aren't going to continue to let external definitions rule us or wear us down. And this is kind of timely, I hope, going into the new year, that we take a moment, that we think about the foundational, fundamental ways of being that we live by, and that we shake it up that we break loose from something that we've been living according to or that we adopted from who knows where or that we never questioned or challenged before and that we allow ourselves our own personal definitions around these most base parts of our lives. Things like, what does success look like for me? What do I think the definition of a good friend is? How do I think a good parent does things? What do I think it means to be a good partner? Also, and here's a biggie, what is enough? What do I want enoughness in my life to look like? So we're going to look at the expectations and the norms and the obligations that have been handed to us in these ways, these roles, and we're going to ask, Does this work for me? Do I like this? Do I want to keep this? Do I want to change it? Do I want to get rid of it altogether? So let's start with success because go big or go home, right? We might as well just start with something, you know, enormous and all encompassing. So what does success look like to you? And Before we even go there, or maybe you noticed it come up for you already, take a look at what you think success looks like. Like, what was your gut reaction to that? And I'm guessing most of that is based on what our society and our culture and media have told us success looks like, which is something like the old fun, right? Job, spouse, house, car, two and a half kids, beach vacation, ski vacation, Gorgeous holiday family photos, dog and cat, Pinterest perfect cupcakes for the birthday party, promotion, glossy hair, new car, being happy, and a lived-in but still magazine-ready house that's systematically and methodically managed by you. Oh, also, the kids should be happy. The in-laws should be happy. The food should be organic, low-carb, cage-free, homemade, non-GMO, low-sugar, and your whole family should totally love it. Also, you volunteer, and you made dinner for the neighbor who just had surgery, and the aforementioned dog is perfectly groomed, and don't forget to smile, right? In other words, it's all BS. Like, that's what Instagram and commercials and the general engine of commerce and capitalism and advertising advises us regarding success, and some of it sounds nice right? It's pretty and it seems stable because it implies that there's money and family. And so we kind of sort of buy into it. When I talk to students who aren't married or who left corporate America to pursue their own business or who don't want to have kids 
or who eat cold cereal for dinner at 10 p.m., or who are estranged from their parents, these are people who usually, in some way, shape, or form, they say it apologetically, like, I know this isn't what's expected of me. I know this means I've failed in some way. It's like they say these things, and it's like they're either trying to downplay it, or justify it, or generally say, oops, I know, it's weird, I'm weird. Like it's hard to really own something that goes against the grain of quote unquote normal success, right? <coughs> uh, excuse me. It's like these, these steps that we've laid out for life, school, college, graduation, job, marriage, kids, all the trappings of a gorgeous life until you die. <coughs> okay, hopefully that's it. Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. So now let's talk about this. What does success look like for you? We haven't gotten too specific yet here, right? We're not necessarily talking about personal success or professional success or anything in any one element or area of your life. We're just talking in general right now. We're going to zero in more in a minute. What does success mean to you? What do you want success to mean? So when I welcome new students in, when I'm either working with new people privately or in a small group, I ask them a whole bunch of questions to get them thinking and to help give me an idea of where they're at and who they are and what they want. And one of the things that we go through is, what do you value, love, and want in your life? And then how much of what you value, love, and want is in your life? And pretty much across the board, this is eye-opening for people. Like they tell me they love their kids, but they spend most of their time working. Or they tell me they want to travel, but they haven't traveled for years. They crave more time and more space in their schedules, but they have jam-packed calendars. Meaning, what we want and how we live are at odds. Meaning, I think we've lost sight of what success actually looks like for us as individuals. Like to our souls. And instead, we are spinning around the machine of expectations and obligations and trying to get through the day. Right? When you are willing to define what success means to you, you can live your life in a way that means your outsides more closely align with your insides. Yeah? Okay, so let's get a little bit more specific for a moment. That's kind of the global sense of success, right? So now let's talk about things like, what is a good friend? And friendship is kind of a wild one because unlike marriage or jobs or being a sibling or child or parent even, friendship is kind of nebulous, right? There's no like well-defined container. There's no like your inner, your out, black and white thing with friendship. So it's like, what is a good friend? What do you think a good friend is? What do your friends think good friends are? What messages do we get from the world about friendship and how to be a friend and what good friends do for each other? And how often do you communicate or get together or text or call? Do you buy gifts for each other? Do you travel together? Do you have some kind of open door policy where you're in and out of each other's houses? What if it's long distance? What if it's brand new? What if you've been friends for decades? Like there are all these factors with friendship. And well, do we ever take a moment to consider what do I think a good friend is? And what kind of friend do I want to be? How do I want to show up for my friends? How many good friends do I want to have? Or maybe a different way to ask that, how many good friends do I truly have the capacity for? And another important question, what do I want in a friend? What standards or expectations do I have for the friends that I have and that I value and that I hold close? Do you think about this? Have you asked yourself these questions? 
it's interesting. I find this stuff usually comes up when something goes awry. Like a situation arises and things don't go how you thought they would. Or someone says or does something that feels off. Maybe a friend ghosts you or dismisses something tough that you're going through and you go, wait, no, that's not what a friend does. But did you ever think about it before then? Did you ever talk about it with your friends? Did you and your friends ever agree to a set of expectations or standards for what your relationship would look like? Again, in friendship, almost exclusively, there's this very slippery nature to the definition. What is it? It can mean dramatically different things to different people. And I have found you can be friends with someone for years and not know what their definition of friendship is. Usually, this becomes apparent when something tricky or difficult arises, right? Some conflict comes up and you see, oh, here's what we think friendship is or isn't. And it can be devastating. Yeah? If you've personally experienced a mismatch in the definition of a good friend because you have been in a relationship with someone who didn't align with your expectations or standards, meaning they didn't live up to your ideal, or maybe you've been on the other end and you had someone have higher or different expectations and standards of a friendship and you thought to yourself, no, I can't or don't want to live up to that. I can't sustain that level of friendship or commitment with that person. And really, honestly, after about age, I don't know, 25 or so, that's probably happened to some degree or another. You know what I'm talking about. So personal definitions. I think this one is really important to think about. Again, on both sides, what do I want a good friend to be to me? And what do I think being a good friend to others looks like? What is your definition of friendship? All right, so let's widen the aperture again. But as we do this, I want you to consider something that's important to you. So I want you to think about maybe it's your job, right? Your work. Maybe it's parenting. Maybe it's something to do with your physical health, your mental health, your emotional health. Maybe it's your financial health. Maybe it's a role you play, something you are. An activist, a mom, a yogi, a writer, a volunteer, a musician. Something that is near and dear to you. And I want you to consider what you think a good fill-in-the-blank is or does. Like be willing to define this for yourself. Health habits. Being the best employee or boss that you can. Like, does a good mom prioritize kindness, quality time, experiences with the kids? I don't know. What does it mean to you? Oftentimes, we're looking to our family, our bosses, our friends, social media, other parents, neighbors, just the culture and society at large to see, what should I be doing here? Am I a good whatever it is? Am I doing this well? And if you've ever felt this inner mismatch, like you think you're doing it right, right? You're playing according to the quote unquote rules, but you don't feel like you're loving it or you get it or you're really living it. Like that cosmic click you kind of get in your gut, you know, when things are just humming and flowing. That's usually a hint, That's maybe a clue that the definition you're working with isn't yours, right? Maybe you absorbed the definition of a good fill in the blank from somewhere outside of you and how you're doing it, what you're up to isn't really aligned with what you would define a good fill in the blank to be. All right, lastly, this is a big one. What is enough? This is a really important one to consider because I hear from so many of you, listeners, students, clients, and I see this in friends and family too, and hello, myself, people are feeling like they are not enough. They don't have enough. They don't get enough done. 
They don't achieve or accomplish or produce enough. They believe they aren't smart enough or thin enough or pretty enough or rich enough or far enough along. Most of us have a general sense of not enough in our lives. So that kind of begs the question, as we're going through something like personal definitions and redefining all of this in our lives, it begs the question, what is enough? Sub-question, can I let what I have, what I do, what I produce, who I am, can I let that be enough? Oof, right? You could do this with a lot of different elements of your life. Home, work, relationships, money, health, habits, your time, your community, your routines, all of it. What do you want it to look like? How would you know it was enough? What would enough feel like to you? I was in a class with a a whole group of students the other day, and one of my students said this. This was so profound. The whole class kind of was like, and we all kind of were like, wait, what? She said that enough is a decision. It's not a feeling, right? We get to choose what enough looks like, what enough is in our lives. It's not like we're going to arrive and some post-it note from the universe will get delivered to to us and it'll say, hooray, (laughs) you made it. You are officially enough. And I don't know if you've noticed, but the finish line keeps moving. Like we think once I get that job or once I get married or once I have kids or once the kids go back to school or once the holidays are over or once the kids go to college or once the car gets fixed or what if I lose 10 pounds and I get the dog trained and get the house updated, then, then I will have arrived and it'll be enough. It's just, it doesn't work. Like if it did, I think we'd be getting reports from the other side, right? People would have made it and they'd be telling us how to make it, how to be enough. Like they would be reporting back from enoughness, right? The promised land. But... People sell things and creams and stuff and gadgets and more promising that it will make you feel good and better and more and enough. And it never, ever, ever works, which makes me think it's not a thing. Like it's a decision we get to make for ourselves, not a feeling or a destination or a level that we can unlock. And that is pretty darn good news, I think. I love this way of thinking about it. I can decide this is enough. I did enough. I am enough. Not a one and done, maybe. Okay. But I can decide often. I can choose it over and over again. Like enough for today, right? Enough for now. So, personal definitions, being willing to define for yourself what you want your life to look like and feel like and be. Checking in with the definitions that you're using and that you're seeing. Does this work? Do I want this? Is this remotely close to who I am and how I want to live? Parts of it, yes. Okay, great. Keep that part. Parts of it, no. Okay, delete that part. And maybe there's some gaps. I get to fill that in myself. Make changes. Tweak it as I go. Personal definitions. Yeah? All right, my friend. That's it for today. Please remember to rate and review the show. Be sure that you're on the email list at kellyhanlonmccormick.com and I will see you next week at the same time, same place for more transforming anxiety. And until then, please take care.
Do you have someone to help you with your stress, anxiety, worry, and overwhelm? If not, I would love to be your coach. The Fierce Calm Project is my virtual coaching program where we get to go in on topics like this one and I can help you apply these lessons to your life so that you're creating your own transformation. We do live coaching calls, guided meditations, on-demand yoga classes. We hold book club where we read books your neighborhood book club won't. And there's lots of bonus content that I've created just for you. When you're ready to take what you're learning on the podcast to a whole other level, then come on over and check out the Fierce Calm Project at kellyhanlonmccormick.com slash fiercecalmproject.